The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the September 23rd wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to throw at us. That's really important. Today, we're going to go take a look at the circumstances of what the bulls and the bears, the buyers and the sellers, are communicating to you and I as of 1.07 p.m. in the afternoon. I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. I'm certainly here to serve you. So feel free, pick up that phone, dial on in, 877-927-6648. Internationally, you can call us at 727-445-1044. This is wonderful Wednesday. Of course, it's Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got the Dow trading off 60 points. That's off about four-tenths of a percent. The S&P down uh, about three points, uh, nearly flat. NASDAQ Composite just turned slightly green, up two points. That is flat. NASDAQ 100, that's up uh, four points. That's also flat. New York Stock Exchange down 35 uh, bucks, down three-tenths of a uh, percent out there. Uh, overseas overnight, you had the uh, Shanghai that uh, finished off 73 points down two, uh, about a little over two percent. The Hang Seng off a little over two percent as well. The Nikkei closed in observance of a couple of holidays out here. I believe that uh, Monday began the holiday where they respect their elders. Now, that's a great holiday out there. Make sure you teach that one to your children, grandchildren. And then today they're celebrating. I think they just continue with that for a few days out here. Actually, it's called Bridge Bridge Day or something like that. But it's really a celebration, I believe, of the autumn equinox. Hey, by the way, happy fall uh, to you out there. Hopefully it's fall, wherever it is that uh, you're at. So uh, volume is light in the marketplace because of, no, not because of that. Volume is light in the marketplace. We don't know why. It's also the uh, Hebrew faith, the Jewish faith. They're celebrating Yom Kippur. So if you're out there, have a, a great holiday. Of course, it's the Day of Atonement. What a great deal. You get to get rid of all of your sins in one single swoop, one day out there. That is a beautiful thing. Of course, we have the uh, Pope in town, and volume, as I mentioned, is light. Now, the question is, many people might say, hey, it's light because of those situations, holidays, and so forth. And what I would say is, well, let's go actually check that out. Let's not believe somebody's conclusion that, quite frankly, can be half-cocked, so to speak. And what I mean by light volume, right now inside the queues, we've done 12 million shares for the first three and a half hours of trading. That equates to about 22 million for the day. 22 million, and the queues are going into a swing point that has 73 million. Do you realize that that is light by 70%? light by 70 percent it is not because of the holiday we would have to go back into the time period of 2012 because the uh, Yom Kippur holiday in 2013 2014 began on a Friday evening so the market was open um, you know there's their their uh, day of atonement didn't really begin till Saturday out there so we have to go back to 2012 which I did for you on your behalf I went back to 2012 the queues in 2012 they did volume of about 32 million shares versus 21 and I took a look at you know both sides on on either side of the uh, day out there and that was pretty much average volume. It was not a decline of uh, going into a swing point of, let's say, 70% out there. And if we go take a look at yesterday, we're down quite a bit. You've got the IWM. It's done uh, about 10 million shares, a little over 10. Says it'll do 19 million. It's going into a swing point, light by 60%, 57% if we're going to be accurate out here. Of course, we don't know what the volume is really going to be like the next few hours. We're just doing straight line math out here. The SPIs. 
uh, about 48 and a half million. It should do somewhere around 90 million versus the swing point that they're trading that's got 256 million shares, light by 65% out there. The, so here's the cool thing for you and I. We know that uh, 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 Jewish high holiday or not hogwash with regard to the volume attributes in the market. It just doesn't hold water. Look, you can go Google the dates of the holidays, go back and take a look at your charts and determine whether I'm the one that is full of water out there. The diamonds, by the way, they've done about two and a half million shares as we came into the uh, three and a half hour mark at 1 p.m. They're going to do about 4.6 million shares for the day, light by about 67 percent. We can go through each of the ETFs, XLK, XLF, XLV, XLY, all of them down by 60 uh, percent in volume. In fact, the XLB, which is really interesting, that's actually trading into, let's take a look at it. It's trading into the XLB and the XL. E out there are both trading into the August 24th swing point. But you want to see light volume. Take a look at this. The actual swing point. Now, it, it doesn't matter to me whether you want to use the August 24th level. Let me just pull this chart here a little bit to the left. The August 24th swing point. Some say, hey, that low tick wasn't necessarily real out there. Look, let's just take a look at what it is. 27 million shares traded on that day. Today, you're doing 2.8 million. Looks like you've got a run rate in the XLB, the material sector, of about 5 million. You know that the following day was correct. And you're trading, actually, at this stage here, the low of that is 4066 or 4061. That day at least has 13.3 million versus about what the 5 million you're going to do today. So you could use that as a benchmark, I suppose. We'll say the bottom of that if, in fact, the XLB rejects the low of that trading session of August 25th, perhaps you've got a rejection of the overall August uh, bottom out here on both price and volume. If it closes below that level, Meaning 4066, I don't care if it's light volume or not. What that suggests is it goes down to test the August 24th low out there. So we'll take a look at all those. We'll take a look at the ETF uh, structures. But first, let's go take a look at what's going on intraday. See if you and I together can gauge what's going on inside the market. Now, you and I, yesterday, we called that bottom, did we not? We took a look at volume moving down with light volume. You and I took a look at the pattern, one of your favorite patterns out there, when price moves down with lower, with uh, less relative energy out there, with less, uh, with less uh, oomph, with less momentum. And at 2 p.m., when we were just simply going off the air, we had that nice little bull sash candle. I went ahead and reported. I actually printed the charts out inside of the Tiger's Den. I won't say I printed them, but I posted them inside the uh, Tiger's Den yesterday afternoon and as we went off the air so that they knew that that pattern that you and I had identified where price moves lower with less energy out there, that we did have that bullish reversal signal. Now, what happened overnight? Well, what happened overnight actually into the uh, 4 o'clock uh, time frame is price ran right up into resistance. The resistance of its TAS market profile high. That's the red diagonal, red horizontal line going across my screen. Forget about the diagonal line right now. And that's where price ran into resistance. And then just backed off a bit and moved sideways up until about 9.15. If you were sitting in front of your screens out there, it was like whoosh. And I do mean whoosh. In a period of about three minutes or so, we saw the ES Mini go from a price level in the 1930 range down into the 1910-ish, a little bit below that, I believe, 1908 or so. It did not take long for that to happen. We're looking at a 30-minute bar, but I'm here to tell you that occurred in really a matter of minutes. As price was moving down there, it doesn't get too much cooler than this, price was moving down again with what? Less relative weakness. Hey, big, huge, wide-ranging bar. But as price bounced overnight, then it bounced big time in all of the uh, indice uh, uh, futures contracts out here, all the equity indice uh, futures contracts. Price moved all the way back up to another market profile that had formed out here. This one didn't begin forming until about 6.30 this morning. But that level, the new market profile at the 1939 level, really held as resistance. So inside the ES Mini, you and I, and we do not have that similar pattern that is in play, but you and I can gauge where this bounce is going to move to in the uh, upcoming hours out here. And it's really two different levels that you can uh, track out here. Number one, you've got a descending price line out here, a descending tri a trend line. And that's coming all the way back from the uh, Janet Yellen high that took place at about uh, between 2.30 and uh, 3 o'clock 
on the trading day of what September 17th I believe it was and if you go from that high you actually use the uh, wick of the uh, candle come all the way down to the uh, highs out here at about 2 30 or so in the uh, morning that's on September 22nd and if you use that you're going to see a nice little trend line you're going to see how price has been contained inside that trend line so on this move up which I suspect we'll get inside of the ES mini why do I say that why do I how can I even dare say that because we don't have a price relative strength divergent pattern Here's why I would suggest that that is likely going to be the outcome that you'll see take place over the next uh, hour or two, whatever the time period is that it takes. Now, it's first got to clear this 1927 level. So that's the first hurdle. But that's a simple hurdle for it to clear. If it can clear that, take a look at these TAS market profiles. You've got a light blue line, little lime green line out here. See how the light blue line closer to that uh, bottom out here? That tells you that really in the time period, and this held as support, so we know that as price came back this afternoon, this morning, all on light volume, and right into support, you create a nice little hammer candle here at 1230. There's some follow through on the very next session, the bullish engulfing. This is telling you that the bulls are camped out right here. So they're willing to defend this territory. Yeah, it says 1922. We'll use the low of that hammer candle, 1920.75. If that level fails out there, price will go all the way back down and test the low of last night. It just simply, that's the way that it ought to unfold out there, and that would be the probability. However, if this area holds here, which I suspect that it does, because we've got really three confirmation signals that uh, we got four right you got the low volume no real sellers out in the marketplace of course we haven't exactly seen buyers rush on in but at this stage here price ought to run up and try to hit that trend line if price gets over that trend line you're going to say well where's the trend line steve oh i don't know exactly but it's around 1935 so use 1935 as your gauge here's the deal if it can move higher and get to 1935 it most certainly is going to go tag the 1939 level it might be a little spike you know where you take that little uh, football and you spike it or basketball and you spike do you spike a basketball yeah but uh, yeah it's going to likely spike that area of resistance but here is the deal. Because we're going to go test, uh, because we have been testing swing points on light volume out here, if the ES Mini is able to clear 1939.75, well, uh, yeah, 1939.75 by the end of today's trading, you're going to see a larger bounce unfold. In fact, you can see a bounce to a, a bottom that would occur inside of the uh, marketplace because you've got a trend line. Now, the cool thing for you and I is that these trend lines, they're present on each of the uh, four indices out here, the four futures contracts. You take a look at the 30-minute chart out here. Uh, this is of the NQ. You can see, in essence, the exact same thing. You did a successful job yesterday of not getting too caught up into the emotion of the mere fact that the market was moving lower, that you knew, you absolutely knew it was moving lower with no conviction behind it. Yeah, that nice price relative strength diversion pattern, price bounce, obviously the same pattern that we just looked at inside the Mini ran into resistance at its TAS market profile at 4287. That's uh, the about 4282 or so is uh, where that uh, trend line is at out there. And that is how you'll gauge what is going to unfold next. Steve Rhodes with TF and We'll be right back. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. 
in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's off 77. S&P is down uh, five uh, during that break. There was uh, getting some education by Mr. Bill and our man David White inside the uh, Tiger's Den, a principal referred to as Ocom. Maybe I don't hope I pronounce that properly. Ocom's razor. So Mr. David White says the principal states that among competing hypotheses that predict equally well, the one with the fewest assumptions should be selected. Well, let's go take a look at a few hypotheses and some assumptions out here. We know that the market is moving down with light volume. We also know, we don't have to even assume here, uh, so there's not an assumption. We know that uh, in prior Jewish high holidays that uh, the market has had uh, plenty of volume, unlike what it is that we're seeing today. So let's just stick with the simple volume rule out there. Let's go take a look at the ETF structures. And then we're going to go take a look at one other assumption that needs to be made in order to determine whether or not there could possibly be a rejection on price and volume of a swing point. You know, if you can't bust them down, you try to go bust them up. We'll go take a look at what those levels actually mean out there. So let's go start off with the cues. As you and I know, uh, the volume that it is trading down into, I pull that back up on my screen, down by about 70%. Now, we're going to use this uh, swing point here of September 1st as often as we can. And if we take a look at the top of that uh, swing point, because uh, it's a little junior-ish swing point, the top of that is the high is 103.29. We know that that was tested yesterday. Price got down to 103.13 this morning, only getting down to 104.66. 
So it wasn't tested today, but it was tested yesterday. 47 million shares tested and rejected that top with uh, that had 73 million shares. So that was 50% of the volume. We're coming in even lighter than that. So you've got a total rejection of that area. If you can't bust them down, it says it will try to bust them up. Well, inside the queues, the busting them up is only going to take you into about the 108 area. And that's the swing point from September the uh, 17th. We'll come back to this, but first we've got to go out to Fort Collins, Colorado, to our man, Mark. Mark, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this afternoon? Great. How are you? Good. Oh, of course, still, it's late morning for you. You're just getting ready for lunchtime. What are you going to have for lunch today? That's a great question, but I am getting hungry. Ah, okay. Well, um, yeah, well, I'll tell you what. Um, you come on out to Florida, we'll buy you lunch. All right, sounds good. I'll okay. You, <laughs> you know, you want to take a look at USO, which is the ETF uh, for uh, going long oil. Are you in the trade, looking to get in? No, I'm looking actually, tell me, I've just kind of seen what you think on the strategy. I'm, there's a, I'm looking at a 30-minute chart. I'm looking at a fairly high-volume low spike on the 18th. Gotcha. Uh, 14 Which has, vo has volume of 6.4 million shares, yeah. Yeah, and it just came down with 5.3 this morning, and now it's the volume's lightening up a little bit. I'm actually looking for a light volume test of that 1442, and even on a daily chart, um, anywhere between 14, that number and 1425 and even 1416 are the last three swing lows on decent volume. As one, actually, the, the 1425 doesn't have a lot of volume at it, but the 1442 uh, and the 1416 do way back from September 2nd. I was wondering, now, what, I was thinking of scaling in. What do you think? Well, okay. So, you know, the cool thing about the, uh, uh, the actual swing point, folks, that uh, Mark is looking at, what I like about that, is that uh, on the 30-minute chart, as long as you stay with it, that 30-minute candle is a hammer candle. So if you were going to scale in now at 14.54, add to it at uh, 14.42, uh, as long as it stays about 14.42, then you know you're in a then you're. Then you've at least tested a swing point with light volume. You've got your back up against the wall. You don't want to see it obviously crack below that 1442 because it could set up an A to B equals CD to the downside, even if it gets down below it with light volume out there. Um, you know, or at least the price could get down into that 1416 area. How far? Were you considering letting this thing run? And I'm only looking at the 30 minute chart along with you as well. Um, I don't want to let it go below 1416, which is another high volume swing from the second, because that means maybe it goes all the way back to the bottom. Yeah, yeah. So I totally, you know, I totally agree with that uh, logic. Um, let's take a look now. That's the 30 minute chart. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, daily chart for USO up on my uh, screen out here. And uh, if we take a look at the swing that it's moving into at 1442, and you might have said this, but just to reiterate, that had 28 million shares, and today you're doing uh, you're doing 20 million shares. I tell you what, can you hold on through this break, Mark? Okay, we're going to go out to uh, we're going to go out uh, we're going to take a break. Then we'll go back out to Fort Collins, and uh, we're going to give Tom, we're going to give Mark an opportunity to go make some lunch. But then we'll be right back, folks. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN has just announced a brand new morning lineup that is geared specifically for traders in this volatile trader's market. Every morning at 8 a.m., John Logan starts things off with his daily program, The Global Market Pulse. At 9 a.m., Larry Pesavento trades the market during the market open Monday through Friday on Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom O'Brien hosts the Money Masters for the hour, and Basil Chapman hosts his Tiger Technicians Hour at 11 a.m. From 8 a.m. till noon every market day, these traders are with you as they provide up-to-the-second market information so that you can make the most educated and profitable trades possible. The new TFNN morning lineup is happening right now. Tune in to see for yourself what kind of actionable trading discussion they have each morning, Monday through Friday, starting at 8 a.m., live only on Tiger TV at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, we're on the line with Mark and Fort Collins. Uh, we're taking a look at uh, ticker symbol USO. That's the ETF, United States Oil Fund. I've got the 30-minute chart up on my screen. During the uh, break, the uh, oil fund, which was listening to the conversation, which was already anticipating what Mark was going to do, it went down and tested the low of that swing point at 1442, which it's trading at 1442 right now. So now you've got the uh, now you at least have the test of that area. It yeah. is most certainly going to be a test on light volume. The question is going to be, and that's so what I would do now is I wouldn't do anything until one uh, until two p.m. You know, okay. let that thirty-minute candle test and reject it because I think that uh, you know what I did was I looked at the uh, daily chart. And I got a little bit concerned as we were going into the break because the actual trading session that you're benchmarking for volume only has 28 million shares and you've done 22 million, which says you're going to do more than 28 million. Okay. So a close below that says that uh, that 1416 area that you had mentioned, that that more likely is a uh, price target uh, for for USO. But I think that what you also have to do, if you can, is to really uh, pay attention and maybe benchmark the actual contract um, for light sweet crude. Because it says to me in light sweet crude, these aren't going to exactly correlate tick for tick for tech. 
Uh, and it says to me, I'm just waiting for the market profile to pop up. It says to me that light sweet crude is more likely than not going to at least get to 4389. Okay. And if it fails at if it fails at 4389, there's a really then your real buy on uh, light sweet crude or the USO would be if it could get back to 3966 to 4030 in the November contract out there. It okay. may only it may only get to forty one ninety seven if it closes below forty three eighty nine, um, but you know that's what I would be that's what I would be taking a look at. So at a minimum, I would at least wait for this uh, thirty minute session inside the USO to uh, you know to test and reject it out there. Is that your thinking too, or? Yeah, that that was good. I was gonna grab I was gonna grab a small amount at four fourteen forty two and. Um, kind of scale in maybe all the way down to fourteen sixteen, but um, I, I'm going to definitely watch the volumes on the, the. Yeah, because you know what it actually equates to. If the vol, if we, if straight line math were to work, it doesn't always. But if it were to work, we would say that the USO could do fifty two million shares today. And that's just yeah. too much volume. In a, in a market where everything else is coming back with light volume, why is USO coming back with heavy volume? In, yeah. Into what it is that you and I are looking at, you know, and so I would just kind of keep it simple uh, there and and say, uh, you know, probably because the crude contract wants to at least get down to forty three eighty nine. So that okay. those are my thoughts. Thank you. You bet. Hey, thanks so much for calling and have a nice lunch. You too, bye. Okay, that was Mark in Fort Collins. Now before we uh, before we took that call. Um, we were also talking about volume, and we were looking inside the QQQ ETF. I'm going to switch over and take a look at the uh, spies right now. And uh, do I want to take? No, I don't want. To, we're going to go. We're going to go right to the summation index because we're going to come with the with with two assumptions here. We know that the Qs are pulling back with uh, light volume. The rest, the entire market is. But as we really try to keep things uh, simple out here. We're going to take a look at the summation index, and we're going to take a look at it for the NASDAQ. So as we take a look at it for the NASDAQ, what I want you to notice, this is very subtle out here, that yesterday was the first time that we've seen a uh, price close in its price oscillator below zero. Now, we saw one day wonder, one hit wonder on September 1st. Price got right back up above that level the very next trading session. That said that sellers never had control of the uh, market. So therefore... Yesterday, we saw a close just slight, slightly below it. If you take a look at my data box in the left-hand panel, you'll see a minus $2.96. Right now, you're at minus nine sixty. It's very subtle. But two days in a row, even with light volume, would be confirmation out here. So you have a conflicting signal in this case. And I will tell you, the one that would win, if I'm going to keep it easy, you don't want to be long a market until the price oscillator gets back above zero. Light volume or not. And I will say that because, especially with light volume, this price oscillator should have no problem getting above zero by the end of the trading session. If it doesn't, markets close where they do, um, you know, in the, in the negative out here, then yeah, I'm saying you do not have a clear signal. You have one signal based on volume, but I will tell you that the uh, troops here are saying, hey, not so fast. Now, does that mean that uh, tomorrow when everything comes back in uh, play that we don't see a spike down to the August 24th level, you know, at 46.94, and then it rejects it? Maybe. Maybe not. In fact, if we go take a look and we just stay with the price oscillators out here, uh, the composite was the only one that was negative yesterday. Yeah, and, and the conclusion I just gave you inside the composite would hold more water if both the New York Stock Exchange and the Dow's price oscillator had also closed below zero yesterday. They didn't. The market often doesn't give us everything that we want, but it does give us enough clues. Inside the New York Stock Exchange today, light volume pullback, obviously, but the price oscillator is back below zero. You're well into the bar of the 24th. You're well into the bar of the 25th out here. Um, you know, what it would need to take in order for there to be a bounce. Now, in the case of the New York Stock Exchange, the bounce would take you up to somewhere around 10.130, maybe 10.362. I don't think that the New York Stock Exchange will, t uh, will take out the high of 10.362. And what I specifically mean is a close above that. And in fact, if it doesn't take that out, you can expect that the uh, 
I don't care, again, if it's light volume or not. Here's what you can anticipate. Here's what I'm suggesting that you anticipate. I'm only su- I would never ask you to do something that I'm not doing. My anticipation would be that uh, what's going on in the market is not necessarily volume related, and we're going to go see at least a test of those uh, lows out there. Um, and that's assuming that the New York Stock Exchange is not. T- in fact, we may see the markets move well beyond that. may just totally freak you out. Um, but September could be, the rest of September could be one wild ride. And we're just seeing some, uh, we're truly seeing some subtle uh, reasons to go ahead and take a look at that. Hey, let's go out to uh, Philadelphia to our man, uh, John. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Today. Mr. Rhodes, good afternoon to you. Thank you. Thank you. Steve, hey, Steve, Steve what, I, uh, I wanted to ask if you could uh, share with, me and your listeners, your gold thoughts. Um, you and I have spoken, been in close contact. You know my thinking that there's a chance that the uh, the July lows in gold was at bear market bottom, <clears throat> and uh, there remains the open possibility that it's not, that uh, bear market is still ongoing. Uh, I'm finding it tricky here. I was hoping if you could uh, help tip the scales for me. <laughs> well... You know, I'd I'd like to. Um, I well, first of all, uh, folks, the conclusion that John reached that uh, the July low inside of gold may have been a uh, bear market bottom because gold's been in a steep decline. Um, I, what I can tell you is that 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 shiny metal about every thirteen and a half months typically makes a significant bottom, and that was scheduled to take place. July to August. You don't have to be exact on that. So in addition to that, and that didn't factor into John's work, but I'm just telling you that's another element that is out there to uh, pay attention to. What I can say, and I know that uh, I think that it has more meaning perhaps than maybe the rest of the market, I don't know. I believe that gold priced in euros is as important as gold priced in uh, dollars out here. And gold priced in euros is still above its descending trend line out there. And that says, and it's just moving sideways. And what I would anticipate is that gold probably just moves sideways for a few days. There is a special indicator that I use, and I do mean it's a very special indicator. It's uh, in the uh, center section of my screen out here. And it needs just a few more days of sideways-ish type action to get above its red line out there. It's a red line that you pay attention to. It's a red line that when price gets above it or that oscillator gets above it and then dips back below a trend initiates. Now, the problem is it doesn't tell us where that trend direction is going to go. Is it to the upside or to the downside? With gold being above that descending trend line price in euros, I'm thinking that it's going to be to the upside. I also believe that you and I have some friends that believe the same thing. And those friends are referred to as the uh, commercial traders, uh, folks. And each Friday, the uh, CFTC produces a file for you that uh, can allow you to go see what uh, three different categories of traders of financial futures, in this case here, we're actually taking a look at gold, what their thinking is. But you have to really uh, understand different ways to evaluate the information. We all have different uses for it. The use that I like is comparing their positions, their net short positions. They've always been net short. And I like to compare that to the open interest. And on the uh, chart that we're looking at right now is over the course of the last few weeks, while gold has basically done very little, the commercial traders have ramped up their less net short position. Now, they're not down to the same levels that they were at when the uh, bottom came in back in uh, June of 2013 or the most recent bottom back here in August, uh, July of 2015. But they've ramped up. They're ramping up you know, very quickly to get back and, you know, what, what I would say would be, you know, almost like a longish style position out here. So we've got, I think, a little bit more patience 
with regard to what uh, gold is doing to give us really an ultimate uh, setup out there. And I would then say, John, that the other and now we won't know whether we're going to see a break in the trend until we also see gold break that descending price uh, trend line in dollars, which would be around the 1145, 1150 area. And if we see that, then we're going to see a move up into the 1200, 40, 1250, probably a, a good 100 point move out there. Maybe it's more than that. Um, you know, we'll know what happens if, in fact, it plays out like this. You know, how does gold handle the swing point from August 24th? So that's my interpretation on what uh, gold is actually doing. And sideways movement over the course of the next couple of days is actually a, a good thing. What we don't want to see is somehow gold make a big swoosh to the downside uh, with some volume. And I would think that over the course of the last couple of days, that's where it really had an opportunity to do that uh, because of the uh, dollar, U.S. dollar index being so high, uh, having moved so much. So, you know, those are those are some of my thoughts. How does that sound to you? Steve, I, I appreciate that. Uh, very helpful uh, review. I'll, I'll uh, add just one last thing to you. We're at 11.31 on uh, the gold futures contract right now. And should we get a break from here down towards, oh, gosh, 11.15, if that were to occur, that would just be a lovely lower risk setup for a buy. Um, and uh, so that's the only intelligent thing I can, uh, I can add to that right here. Yeah, well, you know, you, you, you use the price of 1115. Um, you know, even if it tested 110150, another retest of the uh, swing point from July 24th and reject that, you know, that wouldn't be a bad play as well. There is a new uh, daily market profile that has appeared today, and that has uh, support. The bottom of that box is 1102, the center of the box 1106, and 1115, which may be the price that you're looking at, happens to be the top of that box out there. So any of those would be good. Ideally, though, we'll just see continued sideways movement. That gets the oscillator that I'm looking at above the threshold level, uh, which happens to be 0.618, believe it or not, and it's unrelated to the types of uh, Fibonacci numbers that we use out there. Uh, but that would then uh, get that accomplished. Um, you know, and, and, and the other thing that I would say is, you know, the volume inside of the mining uh, ETFs out here uh, has been uh, relatively good, uh, relatively light on the uh, pullbacks as well. Technico Eagle today, 1.5 million shares. Yesterday, 3 million shares, and it had moved up with 4.5 million shares a couple of trading days ago. So I think everything is lining up that this is going to be a, a space that people will want to uh, play in. Those are, those are my thoughts. Steve, thanks so much for the, uh, the review and discussion. Appreciate it. You betcha. Thanks so much. And uh, that was John in uh, Philly. Right now we got the uh, Dow. She's off 35 points. The S&P is flat. The composite's up six. Russell is uh, just off uh, one point. Let's go finish off the uh, ETF structures out there. We looked at the Qs. Do we look at the IWM? I don't recall. And if we did, I apologize. Let's go take a look at it anyways. Now, in the case of the IWM, the September uh, 1st swing point is where it's trading into. That swing's got 45 million shares. You've done 12 million today. So you've got a light volume pullback, but you don't have any kind of rejection. A rejection inside the IWM today would be a close above 114.12. That's the number you want to watch. You're at 113.72 right now. If you get a rejection of that area, then you'd have the Q rejecting it from yesterday, the IWM rejecting its September 1st swing point today. If you take a look at the SPY out here, the SPY, that is testing September 1st. It's trading into it. That has 256 million shares on September 1 yesterday, 153. Today, you've done 56 million shares. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. 
trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lending. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's off 49 points right now. S&P is down uh, two. Composites up just slightly. Quickly back to the uh, summation index price oscillators out there. So the composites up slightly. Again, its price oscillator still below zero two days in a row. It all depends on how it closes out there. We see the Dow is below zero. We see the New York Stock Exchange just slightly below. If we go check in on the VIX index, see what it has done today. Now, kind of interesting. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. As we blow this up on our screen, you got the VIX index. That's trading out at $21.84. It got down to a low this morning of uh, 21.14. 20.70 is the magic number out there. That's a 50-day exponential moving average. Even though we're pulling back on light volume, 
What you really want to see is you really want to see that VIX below 2070 before you would try to fire away at the uh, long side of the uh, market. When the VIX trades above the 50-day exponential moving average, bad things can happen price-wise out here. And what you and I know is that since the trading session of August 19th, price has been above that 50-day exponential moving average. Price has only come back to test that all-important support slash resistance line. Now it has become support. It's been re it was resistance for quite a period of time after that. So that is a dangerous uh, s a signal out there. What does that mean? Hey, sometimes it's best not to play in the sandbox. Sometimes cash is a position. In fact, all the times, all the time, cash is a position out here. And when it comes to these indices, they're throwing off different kinds of signals. We didn't uh, finish off by taking a look at the Dow Diamonds. Let's go take a look at it. You're going to also see light volume. The question is, is it testing anything? And if we look at the September 1st uh, tr uh, swing point, 14.2 million shares. You've done 2.9 million shares. The key number today is going to be 162.62. And you're 162.59. If you close underneath 162.62, that says, hey, you can go down and test the bottom. And if you do close above that level, and you can't bust them down, if that's truly its message, then that says it tries to bust them up. And that says you're not going to get above 168.98. Still could be a trade out there. But you've got some potential risk to the downside out here. Stevie says, um, you know, if you're not in a position right now, that's a good position to be in. So, uh, folks, let's see what else is. And you know, we've beaten the volume thing uh, like it's a like it's a what do they call it? A dead horse out there. We don't want to be doing that anymore. If we take a look at, let's just go update ourselves and take a quick peek at uh, USO uh, for that uh, trade that uh, Mark and Fort Collins is taking a look at. Uh, at this stage here, that has tested and rejected that 1442 level. You're six pennies above that. Uh, we want to take, he was looking at the 30 minute chart out. Let's just go see if volume was accelerating into it. No reversal signal out there. That's a bummer. You like to see some type of reversal candle. We don't have that. You just have a little spinning top so to speak. Volume uh, is about 2 point, uh, probably finishes around 2.2 million shares. Testing the swing was 6.4. Uh, this needs to, uh, Mark, if you're still listening, this thing at least needs to get back above the top of that swing point, 1463. Daily-wise, it's coming into that swing with a bit too much volume out there, so be careful with that uh, trade. Hey, let's take a look real quickly here. Regenerate Pharmaceuticals, that's bouncing here. Let's not look at the 30-minute chart. Let's look at the uh, daily chart out here. Of course, the IBB was taken apart. Uh, uh, however, taken apart, it also has tested the August 24th uh, swing point three times. Now, that's got 1.7 million shares. It was tested with 888 on the uh, day when, when everything was pulling back. Then 925 yesterday, and today 618. Hmm. Very interesting. Maybe don't play the IBB, but Regenerate Pharmaceuticals has absolutely rejected its August 24 swing point high with light volume. Hmm, something to think about. Folks, stay tuned. Our man David White is up next. Have a wonderful Wednesday. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow afternoon. Take care. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.